the door at four. Beyonce, of course, and Chris in love, my next guest. And what a guy he is. What a guy he is. The star of Little Britain, along with Matt Lucas, of course. And he introduced us to such great characters as Michael Dinner, Emily Hart. She's a lady, you know. But over the last few years, he's captured a new market with his fabulous children's books. Uh, beginning with The Boy in the Dress, Mr. Stink, which has recently been turned into uh, a stage play, and out today, the brand new one, The Billionaire Boy. Just to give you an idea of David Wyland's talent and how he makes it so accessible for kids and adults alike to get into his book straight away. I'm going to read you the first paragraph of uh, Mr. Stink, the very first, first page. Mr. Stink stank. He also stunk. And if it is correct English to say, to say he stinked, then he stinked as well. He was the stinkiest, stinky stinker who ever lived. And earlier on today, uh, I had a chance of speaking to David Williams, and I asked him where he came up with the idea for Mr. Stink. At the time I was writing the book, I was doing a play. I was actually in Dublin doing a play with Sir Michael Gambon, who plays Dumbledore in the Harry Potter films. And I really had his voice in my head when I was writing the book. And he's a very eccentric character. He would turn up to the theatre, and you go, oh, look at this, look at this. And in his pockets, he'd have two 16th century pistols. <laughs> you know, he's a really, really magical and eccentric guy. And so I, I had his his voice in my head when I was writing the story. He doesn't smell in any way, but um, he is quite an eccentric character. I mean, the, the book is about a, a girl called Chloe who's 12 years old, and she befriends this local tramp called Mr. Stink, and she invites him to live in... Um, her parents shed without telling them and that's really the the starting point for the story and, and it's nice that you call mr stink who is ostensibly a, a, a vagabond i think that's a great name yeah well i tried to think of all those brilliant words other than than, than tramp or wanderer mm. as well as another one when i was a kid there were more sort of tramps like that i mean obviously there was a time when it felt like homeless people tended to be a bit older and and now obviously you get lots of young people on the street and and the book is really about you know don't judge a book by its cover this man lives on the street but he has a he has a story to tell you know he's no less of a person than anyone else just because he lives on the street and a very heartwarming story out that and, but the, the thing that really caught me is i felt like a 10 year old reading it and let's just say i'm a day or two away from 10 years that's the the, the audience is sort of nine plus and um before i i write children's books i've got three now and then the new one billionaire boys just come out on paperback is I, I reread a lot of the books that I loved as a kid, um, especially Roald Dahl books, and, and you know try and get my head in that place again. Think of you know what, what would amuse me when I was ten or twelve years old. Do you get kids to read your books before you finish them? No, because it's not, that's not quite possible just because of like deadlines and stuff. Mm. But I do get a lot of feedback from kids, and I get a lot of letters from kids now because there's three books out. And so I really listen when I, when I meet them at signings and stuff like that, which are the bits of the books they liked and, and what, what kind of things they responded to. And um, it's really, really fascinating listening to them. A lot of the times they just like the rude bits. <laughs> obviously, it can't all be rude because there's got to be a, a story too. And I love the thought that uh, Mr. Stink is now going on tour in scratch a vision so to speak. Tell me about that. Well, it, it's Stink-A-Vision, I'm calling it, which is the, uh, so now a theatrical production, Mr. Stink, it's a musical. And I thought it would be great if there was an interactive element. So you're given these scratch and sniff booklets on the way in and you're invited at certain points in the story um, to scratch a page and it might be a nice smell, like there's a character called Raj in his sweet shop, or it might be a nasty smell like uh, Mr. Stink burping. And I went to the opening in Leicester uh, a week ago and it was really fantastic hearing all the kids react in horror and delight at the smells. <laughs> How wonderful is that? that? That's going to be the future of pantomime, do you realise that? Well, I think so. You know, it would be great, wouldn't it? I think it's quite expensive to produce these scratch and sniff booklets. So, but yeah, I think I think kids, you know, a, a theatre piece for kids, the kids have got to be involved in some way. Because, you know, you're, you're restless as a kid. You're not going to sit there in, in, in silence for two hours. You know, you've got to be part of the show. So it's a really brilliant interactive part of it. And it's a good way to get them, as you say, the interaction with the characters themselves. But there, a lot of your characters in your books, they keep popping up, for instance, isn't Raj in the new book as well? Raj is in, in all my books. Yeah, he was a really useful character. He's, he's a local news agent, and he's mm. actually based on my local news agent, who is called Raj. But um, he's great because he's not a parent and he's not a teacher. So he can kind of give advice to the kids without it being too loaded. And he's a real sort of child at heart. So he's been a really, really great character that I've carried through. He's the only character that carries through. But um, 
but yeah, I really love writing him, and um, Quentin Blake illustrated him brilliantly in, in Boy in the Dress and, uh, and Mr. Sink. So yeah, I'll probably carry on, you know, having Raj in the novels. Some great character, Mrs. Croon. You mentioned Raj, Mr. Sink, but the brand new one, Joe Spud, the billionaire boy. Tell me about him. Well, this is about a boy who's 12 years old, and his father invented a toilet roll that's moist on one side and dry on the other, and he becomes a billionaire. <laughs> so Joe has everything he could ever want. He's got, uh, you know, water slides and uh, indoor 3D cinemas, everything he could ever want, but he doesn't have a friend, and it's really about his search for friendship. And I suppose the message for kids is that, you know, money alone won't make you happy. But every book has done better than the last, and that one has, has really taken off. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I, I now have this sort of second career as a children's author. And has Duncan Ballantyne been on the phone about the toilet roll yet? He hasn't, but I do think it's a good idea. I think it's a brilliant idea. The, the product in the book is actually called Bum Fresh, and I think, well, you know, can someone now market this, and actually I could become a billionaire. It'd be brilliant. You could be the face of Bum Fresh if you part of it. <laughs> I could be the bum of bum flash. I think, you know, you really want this picture of a big fat ass, and I could do that. There you go. I can see billboards now with David Wyden's bum all over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, all these great characters, all of these characters that you play in Little Britain and Can't Fly With Me, how much of you do you put into them? Well, I think there's got to be something of you in it, because I think to create a character, it's got to be some expression of a, a part of you, even if it's part of you you don't really like. Um... That's not to say you are the characters, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, especially if you're playing them, I think it does come from somewhere inside you, not, not necessarily something you just sort of take from the outside. So, uh, yeah, all the characters I've played, there's, there's probably something of me in them, which is, that sounds awful. Because <laughs> some of these characters are monsters. <laughs> I mean, most of them are monsters, actually, because uh, to create a comic character, they've got to be really flawed. So, yeah, there's a part of me in that computer says no woman, I suppose, and there's a part of me in... Emily Howard, obviously, well, that is very course. closely based on me. <laughs> you are a lady, after all. But are there any characters you just won't go away? You can't put them to bed, you know what I mean? Um, well, I think the characters that were best to play were the ones that had a bit of a, an emotional life, like in Little Britain, the character I played of Lou, who's looking after Andy in the wheelchair. That, for me, was, is quite a human story. It's he's, a, he's a helper, but he's... Um, you know, he's completely, he's never thanked he, for, for anything he does, and he's in this really desperate situation he can't escape from. Uh, Sebastian, who's the character who's in love with the Prime Minister, I thought, well, that's quite true to life. You know, most of us at some point would have suffered from unrequited love. And so they came from a kind of um, truthful place, I suppose. And so those characters I, I really enjoyed playing and going back to. So we, we've now got Mr. Stink on the stage. Do you think we're going to see him on the box? Well, the BBC um, have uh, bought the rights to the novel, so they're developing it now as a, as a TV film. So that would be fantastic, yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about books is they can have such a life, you know. I mean, people obviously read books written hundreds of years ago, and the fact that, you know, now Mrs. Stink's on stage and it could be a, a TV film as well is, is a real thrill. And are we going to see Michael Gambon in the lead role? Well, he, he would be, uh, you know, if we could afford him, he would be brilliant, yeah, because he is, um, well, he's my, he's my favourite actor in the world, you know. He was when I grew up, so meeting him and working with him was just, like, the biggest thrill of my career. I, do, I can't get the, this vision of his pockets out of my head, no, it's bizarre. <laughs> I don't think he's always got 16th century pistols in his pocket, but he did do that day, and I just thought, I don't know anyone else who would walk around the streets with, like, ancient... Uh, he wouldn't do that. I'm Northern <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Tell I'm me. actually coming over soon, because uh, uh, my friend Rob Bryden's uh, doing a show with Kenneth Branagh. That's right. You know about so, it? Yep. And the lyric, yeah, I believe. Um, yeah, they're doing a, a play in Belfast, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming over to see it. I can't wait, actually. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll come to one of the, the finest new theatres in, in all of the UK. It's wonderful. It was only open about two or three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Well, it's uh -huh. great. They've got Kenneth Branagh, who's you know, obviously one of the world's greatest actors and Rob Bryden's a good friend of mine. He's not quite <laughs> as good as Ken Bryden, but he's brilliant. Our, so I can't wait for that show. Our Kenny. So what else are you up to? Uh, well, I'm doing a show on, on Sky, which is a comedy panel show called Wall of Fame, and that starts next Friday. It's a topical show, so we haven't recorded it yet, but um, Jack D and a comedian called Andrew Maxwell. Do you know him? Oh, I know, yes, he's, I know him very well. He's a good fella. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's very, very straight. 
His hair is very straight. He's almost got like a sort of Justin Bieber type hair, which is slightly strange because <laughs> his face isn't like Justin Bieber's, but his hair is. But he's brilliantly funny, and um, I'm really thrilled that we've got such great comics. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the, the best of those sort of panel shows is when there's real chemistry between, you know, the hosts and, and, and the team captain. So uh, I'm really excited to start that series. Fantastic. And whenever you're over here, there's no chance of me getting you down into the sea for a quick swim, is there? Well, there is. I, when I was uh, working in Dublin, I, I, I went swimming in the sea, and I was there in sort of September, October. There was this place called the Forty Foot. Yep. You know that? Yes, certainly do. And uh, really dangerous. I was sort of jumping off this rock, and these boys said, oh, don't jump there, because uh, there's, there's rocks under the water there. But yeah, it was absolutely freezing. It was like, because you had an instant incredible headache, the water was so cold, you know. But there were loads of people in the water. <laughs> quite nutty because it was freezing but um it was a really fun place to go so when i come back i, I want to get in the water again there I are you a speedos man or a thong uh no i'm a trump's gentleman yes but i am on the sea quite often so you're, you're more than welcome oh, really? to join us. oh very much so yeah if you don't mind the cold it's not too bad is it not at all once you're in as i always say to people keep moving once you're in keep moving you'll be yeah. fine though the body if you create body heat then it's not too bad oh well we, we can grease each other up and have a nice swim <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day David Williams would say that to me. David, lovely to talk to you, and best of luck with Billionaire Boy and Mr. Stink as well. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely talking to you. Bye-bye. Sometimes I wonder about this job. Yesterday afternoon, I had Lorraine Chase and Anita Harris in this studio trying to kiss my cheeks, and then David Williams wants to grease me up. It's a very strange world indeed. David Williams, the book's out now. It's called The Billionaire Boy, and uh, check out Mr. Stink as well. Very, very funny. Uh, just to remind you, the competition.